Hey y'all, hi. So here's what's happening. I'm moving. My husband and I are moving all the way across the country. We're moving from Los Angeles to the D.C. area, not Washington, D.C. proper, but the greater D.C. area pretty soon. And as you can see from the chaos behind me, we are like quite far along in packing. We're kind of in the middle of packing. And I just finished sorting the makeup that I'm going to pack from the makeup that I'm going to declutter before we move from the makeup that I'm going to keep with me, like in the suitcase that I am living from during the three weeks that our stuff is either packed up here or in transit or not yet unpacked in our new house. I actually filmed that process and there should already be a video up on my channel, an overhead video with close up footage of all of my makeup as I go through all of it and make all of those decisions. And today I'm going to take my little travel makeup kit, which is in this carry case and also in this little palette. This is the entire thing. I'm going to take it for kind of a test drive. Ideally, I won't have to make any changes because I've actually already physically packed the rest of the makeup. It's like in boxes and I don't want to go through them and dig anything out. But if there are any glaring issues with what I decided to use for these three weeks, I'll discover them today and I'll be able to correct them somehow. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This is one of the last videos if not the last video in this location with this background. And probably as you're watching this, I'm already setting up in my new location and there will be a new background that I'm designing from scratch, which I'm really excited for. So if you like this, please subscribe, stay tuned, find out what's next for me. I review some makeup on my channel. I also really like to consistently revisit my collection, the makeup that I already own. To me, it's not all about buying makeup. It's mostly about using and enjoying it. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, let's find out what is in here. I mean, I remember. I did it. I kind of remember. So I, I this is actually quite convenient. I was able to pull the entire innards out of this, and it makes it easier to find things especially the things that were like crammed down on either side of this felt insert, which were my brushes. So I'm making myself a little makeup station here on my desk in front of me. I'm taking out all of the brushes and laying them out so that I can kind of see what I have in this little tiny edit of supplies. Aha, the primer that I decided to keep with me during the move. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. And I usually use something, a tool, or even the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer brush with the little hook on the end to get the product out of this, but I don't have that kind of thing with me. So I'm just going to use my fingers, which is totally fine. I really, really like this e.l.f. primer. I don't know how well you'll be able to see because the lights create quite a strong reflection no matter what's going on. But in person, I feel like it really killed that sort of greasy shine, but without making my skin look really matte or really dry. And most importantly, without making it feel really matte, really dry, or sticky. It feels like skincare, but it's definitely an effective primer as makeup. So far, so good. I think the inclusion of that primer was a really good choice. I have a bunch of really beautiful glowy products that I tend to use to layer under my base, but with this, I feel like I'm never gonna get myself into a situation where I'm feeling like super greasy or super dewy, and I don't have anything to help kind of combat that from the ground up. I have dry skin but I don't know, piling on the skincare and then, you know, with all the dewy products that are on the market lately, I feel like I've found myself reaching for some more balancing products to help keep things looking natural. I am in the process of testing four green color correctors for a video. And this is the only thing that I packed like multiples of. This is a really tight edit of stuff that I use. And these are the only products that I really packed because I wanna continue testing them during this time. They're three drugstore priced green color correctors and one from Chanel. And I love the Chanel one already. I like it so much that I found it hard to keep myself from using it, but today I'm going to use one of the other ones. I'm going to use this one from NYX, the HD Studio Photogenic Corrector or Concealer in Green. 
And to blend it out, I'm using the complexion brush that I decided to pack. It's from BK Beauty. It's the BK 101. I just started using this brush and I really, really like it because it's dense, but it's soft. I like a dense complexion brush. I like to feel like it's got I don't know, kind of like spring and control, you know, rather than it being just like swishing around on my face. And I often find that dense complexion brushes, I find that actually most complexion brushes feel too soft for me. Most brushes that are designed for for the, the thing that I'm doing right now. And so I end up using much denser brushes that don't feel soft. And that's been my preference. The thing that I really like about this that really impressed me and made me decide to pack it for this part of my journey is that it's dense in the way that I need it to be, but it feels really soft on the skin. That NYX corrector has definitely worked to take down the redness in my skin, and it hasn't added any like milky whiteness. The Chanel one does add a little bit of milkiness, and I like that because I'm very pale, but I could see this being a much better option for some people. Y'all, I just realized that there's something that I might have forgotten to put in this travel case that I really need, which is my little handheld mirror. I need it right now, and I also need it when I'm doing makeup on the road. I don't think I packed it. I feel like I wouldn't have done that, but at the same time, I kind of feel like I would have done that. I don't see it anywhere, and a lot of stuff is packed, so I feel I feel like it might actually be packed, but you know, I have a couple of pieces of makeup in here that have mirrors in them, so I'm not completely without a little handheld mirror. I'm just gonna have to hold up makeup to see myself, which is totally fine. Most days, I like to wear as little base makeup as possible. The least amount of base makeup that I need to get my complexion to be kind of even and bright, and green color corrector goes a really long way towards getting me to that place where my skin is the tone that I want it to be. And sometimes I think that when I use green color corrector and then I go straight in with a concealer or a foundation, I use too much of the concealer or foundation because really I need barely anything. Like this has, the green color corrector really made my face match my neck, which is what I care the most about. I might want to brighten a little bit under my eyes, maybe conceal this blemish a little bit, but I would be fine with my skin pretty much looking like this. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate something that I sometimes do to combat this issue. It's like I put the green color corrector on and then I go in with concealer and I conceal as much as I would have had to do if I hadn't used the green color corrector. So I'm gonna give myself time to get a new sense of where my skin is at. So I'm gonna do something else before I finish my complexion is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm going to use this completely busted, finished, empty tube of refi brow pomade. My dearest hope is that I'll be able to get myself to a Sephora before we move and get a new one of these. But for the time being, I'm making these dry little dregs work. My other dearest hope is that I'll find time to dye my brows before we go. I feel like there's maybe a 40% chance that I'll manage that. Uh, so for the time being, I'm continuing to fill them in with this little brow pen. But I'm not filling them in too much. You guys have been enjoying the thinner brows lately. Not, I mean, not like skinny. I'm not going to pluck them and I'm not going to shape them down to a, a line, but you know, just a, a bit of a, a more tender brow rather than like trying to make them as thick as possible. It's also just easier. <laughs> it takes up less time. It's easier for me to just kind of darken the center of them rather than like blocking them out. I'm here for it. That's that. Now, Let's look at the skin with fresh eyes and go in with, again, a tender application of the Salt New York Sneaky Balm, which is this product right here, and a little bit of the white complexion adjuster because the Sneaky Balm is a beautiful skin-like product, but the, light, the current lightest shade is still a little bit too dark for me. There's a mirror in this too. I'm actually gonna put, um, a, I'm putting a little Sneaky Balm on one finger and a little bit of comp white complexion adjuster on the other. And I'm gonna start with my fingers and then kind of finish the blending with the brush. 
it's difficult to see what it did, which I like. You know, it looks very much like real skin, but I do think you can you can see the sort of seamless satiny finish right there. That's what it did. And it evened out my skin tone there. So I'm going to put a little bit of it on the sides where my skin is blotchy with some old acne scars. That's totally enough for me for coverage. I feel like that's gonna do it. And I am going to use a tiny bit of the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Pressed Face Powder, just a tiny bit. And I'm actually just gonna use it on its puff. The tenderest little taps. The Sneaky Balm takes a light application of powder really well, especially when there's a light application of Sneaky Balm to begin with. I found that especially with the little powder puff thing, it's pretty easy to go overboard super fast. So I'm always really careful not to be getting too much on the puff. It's just like really, really lightly dispersing it over the parts of my face where I want it to be a little bit more set, like if I'm gonna wear a mask or something. And I also don't want it to be shining as glossily because especially where there's te texture on the sides of my face when it's sh all super shiny and wet look it really picks up the ridges of that texture however i didn't powder my cheek because i don't mind that being glossy and as long as i have the salt new york palette open i'm gonna go ahead and finish using the products that i'm gonna use from here but there's one that i actually haven't put in there yet it's this if you saw the video where I was playing with Salt New York products and building this palette for this period of my life, you will have seen that I mixed this blush and I'm going to use it today because I promised that I would use it at some point. And I think that because it didn't get packed, obviously it was still like setting after having been mixed. I think I'm just going to put it down here at the bottom of the palette and like take it in this palette and have it with me. And that's partly because the color turned out really, really well. It was a crazy experience, y'all. And if you haven't seen the video, the mixing video where I mixed this color, I highly recommend going and watching it because I was trying to make a color that looks like old gum, a really, really neutral blush on me. And it ended up looking in a vacuum, a little bit green. And I realized that that is because I am olive undertones, I'm quite green. Even the most neutral, palest pink blush, when it goes onto my skin, it looks really pink because green and red are opposites on the color wheel. So my green skin makes anything pink or red look like the pinkest or reddest possible version of itself. And I think that that's part of why I'm so excited by brown blushes because those are like the colors that are natural to the face, the, the browns, but that are receding as far as possible from the reds. So there's a lot of yellow and blue mixed into a brown blush that's cut with a lot of white as well in this because I wanted it to be pale because I'm a very pale olive. So it's basically like a super pale brownish green rather than being a super pale brownish rose, which the vast majority of blushes, like bl not even bl the vast majority, in my experience, all ranges of cream blush that have a very pale neutral shade, it leans quite pink. And all of them that have a brown shade, it'll lean quite rosy. So this is like a super, super pale and super, super brownish tan, but it doesn't lean rosy. Instead, it leans green. And when I first started putting it on yesterday, after I had, I think it was yesterday, after I had filmed that video, it was like I put it on my face for the first time. When I first put it on with my finger, I was like, oh no, Hannah, it's green. It's, it look, it's swamp. It looks like a swamp creature color. It looks like green mud. You've made a fool of yourself. And then I started blending it out and I saw for the first time ever in my life on my face, a truly neutral blush. I'm gonna show it to you. So that's the color. Doesn't it look a bit green? Although now that it's on my greenish face, it'll look less so, like it looks neutral. But look at it, look at it blended out. I know. Yesterday when I did this, I, I had to keep building it up and building it up because I felt like what was happening was my skin was just showing through, but it's not. This is the color. It's just when it's blended out on my skin, that's what it looks like. My skin is bringing out every single tiny dreg 
of warmth from cocoa, which is the salt New York blush that I mixed, that I started with as the base. My skin is bringing out every single bit of warmth and, you know, it's warm. It's dark compared to my skin, but it's totally neutral. It's like an actual just darkening of the color of my skin, like a monochromatic look, monochromatic with my skin, as if my cheeks are just a bit darker than my complexion. And that's the kind of blush that I have been looking for my whole life and haven't been able to find. I'm so excited. My only regret is that I mixed in so much of the lip and cheek shade adjuster, which is a more emollient, kind of more balmy formula. I wish that I had only used the complexion adjuster, which is a slightly more matte, a little bit drier and sturdier formula because it's quite balmy and it's very creamy in the pan. But you know, I'll probably do it again. I'll probably use this up and then I'll probably mix it again. And when I mix it again, I'll make it even better. So I popped that in the corner of the palette and it's gonna stay with me while we're moving. I'm actually gonna try a little bit of it on my lips just to see what it looks like. I feel like this isn't the look. I feel like it's a blush that I made, not a multi-purpose product. And you know, because this is a test run, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use something else for my lips, I think. What is in here? Yeah, because my lips are feeling quite, maybe I'll come back to the Salt New York product, but my lips are feeling quite dry right now and quite like shrunken. So I'm going to use this lip plumper, which is from City Beauty. It's a City Lips lip plumper. It's fantastic. And I'm actually feeling really glad in this moment that I packed it because on a day like today, I would totally reach for this. And I wasn't really sure whether I would want to use it enough to make it worth giving it a spot in my travel bag. But lo and behold, the first time I use this kit, I want it. So I'm gonna give that time to work on my lips, plump them up a little bit, smooth the surface, and while it works, I'm gonna put on some eye makeup. I remembered to pack an eye primer, the Urban Decay Primer Potion. And I only packed two products that are designed for use on the lids. It's a real minimalist eyeshadow situation over here for this travel bag. I have the Tom Ford Naked Bronze uh, Cream and Powder Eyeshadow and Bandwidth from Lethal Cosmetics, which is uh, just a really, really sparkly, wet looking, kind of like silver white liquid eyeshadow. That plumping stuff is already working on my lips. I feel like you can really see it this time. All right, I'm gonna do kind of a quick and dirty eye look with Naked Bronze and then top it with a little bit of Bandwidth. I'm just gonna go the whole distance. So starting with the cream. Y'all, some gardening appears to be happening next door at this inopportune time. It should be over fairly quickly, but if you hear some buzzing, then that's what it is and, and it won't be for the rest of the video. So that's just the base of cream shadow. Usually it's advisable to do one eye at a time with this product because it does set. It's like a moussey cream that does set. So if you are if you put some on one eye and some on the other like I was doing, and then you get too involved in one eye, the other eye can set and then when you get back to it, it won't blend out anymore. But I've had this for years and I've been using it for long enough that I've gotten to know it really well. And at this point, I, I usually just risk it like a biscuit, as Joe would say, and like plop it on both eyes and then quickly blend, blend, blend back and forth. And that's what I did today and it worked out, but I got I like a tiny bit of a harsh line on this side, maybe harsher than the other. But the other reason that I don't worry about it when I'm doing that is that this topper, this like very finely milled sparkly topper reflects light in all directions and it covers up all manner of blending sins. So I'm going to use my finger to just obscure the blend on both sides and that should make it even more polished and give it that nice like editorial glossy look. So that's it. Just throw on mascara and this is my go-to eye look, which is why I'm packing this as my only thing. I feel like this works for everything. I can wear a look like this to film when I want to look really glamorous. I can amp this up a little bit and make it work. It also works great for every day. It works with all my clothes. It works for going out to dinner. It works day to night. It's so versatile. It's great. So for today, I'm going to amp it up a little bit. I'm going to add a liner. I think I'll use this, which is the Victoria Beckham Eye Kajal in bronze, a gorgeous color. And it's making me realize in this moment that there is something that I didn't pack that I might need which is a pencil sharpener, because this is a pencil that needs to be sharpened. And I actually do think that I already packed all of my sharpeners. So what I might do is 
just pack this and not keep it out with me and just depend on the other eyeliner that I have. So I packed both the Victoria Beckham and the Surratt Beauty Smoky Eye Baton. The Smoky Eye Baton has this twist up liner on one end and then on the other end it has this smudger that dips into the lid which is full of kind of like a glossy smudgy eyeshadow. So if I ever want to make this look smokier, like dark in the outer corner with something, I'll use this. I don't think I'm gonna do that today, but I am going to use the liner today because it's looking like this is actually gonna be the only eyeliner that I have with me. Okay, there. I actually did end up using the other end of the smoky eye baton with a little bit of the powder eyeshadow in the outer corner, just a little bit. I didn't bring it up too high. I didn't bring it up as high as I usually do when I'm trying to get a really good smoky eye. I have to do that because I have hooded eyes. Just left it down in the outer corner. So it's a subtler smoke. It's kind of hard not to, you know what I mean? Like going in with the creamy eyeliner on one end, it just feels like it's but the work of a moment to flip it over and smudge in a little bit of that eyeshadow and then you get that slightly messier, grungier look and I really like that. This product, the Surratt Beauty Smoky Eye Baton, has turned out to be a little bit of a sleeper hit. I kind of struggled with it the first time I tested it for my Violet Gray haul video. I struggled with it a little bit ergonomically because when you're when one side's twisted up and the other side's uncapped, it's a little bit awkward, kind of don't know where to put everything. And it is still that way, it's not the most elegant, but I feel like it's a consequence of the fact that it's such an effective two-in-one. After that video, I lost it for like several months and so I couldn't continue testing it, I just never knew where it was. And once I found it again, I actually found myself using it a lot and now here it is, in this very, very tight edit of stuff, and I'm really glad that I decided to pack it. So as if this isn't glamorous enough, which I do feel like it is, I feel like we've really, it, it has really gotten to a pretty elevated place and also a pretty, like something that's more on the night side of the day to night spectrum. But I have something that I can use to amp it up even more, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply it because you know, what are we doing here after all? This is Bandwidth by Lethal, it is, stunning. I like it because it's that kind of reflective thing that can disappear. You know what I mean? Like at some angles it's gone and then at some angles it's really shiny. It's hard for just a shiny liquid eyeshadow to come in and like shake up the game for me over here because there's so many beautiful things of this kind. But since I started testing this, I haven't been able to put it down. And I they sent me both this one and the gold one. And I have so much makeup that I gave the gold one away. And now I kind of regret it. <laughs> I kind of regret giving it, giving it away. Although I think that my friend who I gave it to is a tango dancer. I think she's getting a lot of use out of it. So I'm happy for her to have it. I, I don't, I actually don't. I, that was a joke. I don't actually regret it. What I'm trying to, I'm this one is perfect for me. What I'm trying to say is that I'm sure all of the colors are beautiful and there are a bunch. There are some like color shifting and holographic ones, but this one, this just like straight up silver, this is my jam. So it just does exactly what the Tom Ford topper does, but more intense. And I'm just putting it right in the middle of my lids because I don't want to overwhelm the parts of my eyes that have the Tom Ford topper on them. I think that going from a really intense to a softer version of the same thing uh, is one of the things that makes something look kind of rich and int intricate and organic. Another thing I really like doing with this Lethal product is putting it on my lower lash line. As I get older and I get more creases underneath my lids, underneath my eyes, I mean, like underneath, uh, in my like underneath lids, what's that called? The under eye area, but the part that's like part of your eyes rather than like your face. I mean, it's creasy on everyone. Like I think it's it doesn't really exist to have that part of the lid underneath your eye where it's just like smooth as a baby's bottom, you know? But as they get older and there are more, cre the creases extend down further and they like turn into the crow's feet that are underneath my eyes. Shiny, super shiny, metallic, reflective things underneath there tend to really enhance those creases. And I find myself less and less wanting to, to smudge and blur like a big panel of metallic eyeshadow or shimmery eyeshadow underneath my lids, which is something that I used to do all the time. But a liquid like this, that's really a clear liquid with a bunch of shiny particles suspended in it, it tends to have a more blurring shining effect, like a sparkling spangling effect, rather than that like texture emphasizing metallic finish. So I like the sort of sparkly, almost like twinkly fairy lights, tears on the lower lash line look that I get when I smudge this out underneath my eyes, but I don't wanna do it today. I'm gonna rein myself in, I'm gonna keep it here. I'm going to apply mascara. The one that I decided to take with me is 
is the Isam mascara. This is a new release. It's really like fibrous, buildable, tangly. I really like it. And I just started testing it. I can tell that it's good enough to be worth being the only mascara that I bring. So I'm not worried about it, but I'm also looking forward to getting to know it even better over the course of these three weeks so I can really tell you everything about it. There. A romantic, grungy lash for a romantic, grungy eye look. I feel very myself. I'm also pleased at the demonstration of the City Lips lip plumper that I've just given because again, I feel like I've talked about it before but I've never really shown you what it does. But I feel like you've been able to see the stages that it goes through as it plumps the lips. So initially the first five minutes it kind of, my lips became like visibly bigger and kind of pale looking as it was sort of working on them. And now they've calmed down a bit. They don't look really alarming. The vermilion border, which is that the skin that's like not your lip, but not your face, is definitely a bit swollen on me. And the lips themselves feel very hydrated and smooth, which is what I care about. Like that's why I wanted to apply that product. I am going to wipe the product off now that it's done its work and apply something else, TBD. Okay, the only other products that I packed, the only other lip products, actually, I've talked about almost everything. The only other products that I packed are the Monaco Blender Blender Cover for when I want more coverage and um, two lip balms, the Ilia and this Glossier Mango one. And the only other lipstick that I packed, the only actual lipstick that I packed, besides the Salt New York balms, the Lip and Cheek, those four colorful ones, they can be used on the lips and the cheeks. So the only actual lipstick that I packed is A Royal Scandal by Gucci. I love this color and I think color-wise, it would be really great. It would be amazing. But I don't really feel like getting into that like full finished glam today. And I think for me, with an eye look this strong, I really need to play it down on the lips if I want to still feel like I'm in that in-between space, a bit casual. So I'm going to use one of the Salt New York balms. I think it'll be either terracotta, cocoa, or rose. Of course, I want to do cocoa. Yeah, and I think cocoa is the one. This beautiful red, even though it's got an in-between kind of balmy consistency that's not too makeup-y, the color would also maybe push it over into that territory. But maybe I'll mix a little bit. I actually ended up mixing all three of them together. And I do, <laughs> I really like how it looks. And I think that the look is great, but I want to tone it down a little bit because of what I was saying earlier, just for the sake of balance and how I'm feeling today. So I'm using the white lip and cheek shade adjuster. And now I'm going to blot it down a little. Mm, I ended up with it slightly pinker than I wanted it to be. So I'm just going back for a tiny bit more of cocoa. There, I like that. It's definitely a lip color, you know, it's it's flattering, it's like brightening the face, but I feel like it looks very lived in, kind of my lips, but better, even though it's obviously not the actual natural color of my lips. I love being able to tinker with the color, with the Salt New York palette, and just, you know, tinker and tinker until I get it perfectly balanced. And that's gonna do it. What did we learn? So I learned that I should just go ahead and pack the Victoria Beckham eyeliner because I don't have a pencil sharpener and so I'm not really gonna be able to use it. Not only did I not pack a pencil sharpener, but it's not, like I need, it needs to be sharpened. I can't even like use it one time. I learned that my little tiny hand mirror that I find so useful might have gone into a box, but I also learned that that's not the end of the world and I don't need to dig it out because I was able to use the compacts as mirrors. And other than that, I feel like I learned that I made pretty good calls all around. I think that I do have everything I need and I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in its case. That's everything, and it all fits in rather well. I didn't have to struggle to get it back in. Yay, I feel good. I feel prepared. I feel prepared to weather these weeks of transition, and I am excited to have kind of like brought you guys in on it a little bit with these last couple of videos. I think I might have said this. I think it's telling that I don't remember whether I said it or not. I might have said this in one of the other videos, the overhead videos. I wish that I was in a place 
to film the entire process, like film myself moving, film myself packing up the boxes, film myself. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll film ourselves unpacking them a little bit. But I know that those kind of videos are really satisfying and I would love to be able to do that. But it's a huge move and we just don't have the capacity or the time to make a project, a video project out of the move in addition to making the move. So this has been my way of bringing you along for the ride a little bit. It, and I hope that it's been enjoyable to you. Where I'm getting at with this is to say that it feels comforting and exciting to me to know that you are kind of like with me or a part of it because of these couple of videos, even though it's just through the lens of like what makeup I'm keeping and what makeup I'm packing and what makeup I'm taking with me in my suitcase. Beauty is actually a very telling lens. It's often a very accurate lens, even though we don't really think of it that way culturally. It is that. That's part of why I really enjoy doing this work. And I feel like this experience, the past couple of videos and how I feel about it, put a spotlight on that. So thank you for being here during this chaotic time. I hope that the videos uh, were worthwhile to you. And I really, really hope that you're taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Oh.